Although many, the term power is often associated with one's strength, speed, and defense. But with these two, their power comes from their inner wacky. Arale Norimaki, the innocent android of Dr. Slump. And Puka, the love-struck ninja fangirl. For this debate, we will be taking everything absolutely serious. This way we can ensure the maximum shenanigans in this battle of gags. <laughs> Help me. With that said, I am Mick Jesus, and it's my job to go over their origin and skills to determine who would win in this episode of The Debate Club. Let's take a trip, shall we, to a quaint little place known as Penguin Village where apparently all the construction workers were on some sort of hallucinogenic drugs, cause what the hell am I looking at? Personally, I think it's genius. I mean, how else am I supposed to know that the coffee shop is the coffee cup shaped house, or the safe shaped house is in a bank? What about the mushroom shaped house and the shoe shaped house? Eh, personal preference. Well, the buildings aren't the only special thing about this place. The people here are just zany. With one brilliant, I'll be goofy adventure, Dr. Senbei Norimaki. However, most people know him by his cruel nickname, Dr. Slump. He can create machines that defy logic itself, from a robot hairdresser that can make any hairstyle, to a rice cooker that can create anything your mind can think of. Anything? Anything. <laughs> Why are you laughing? But one of his greatest inventions put all others to shame. This invention would change the world itself as we know it, able to potentially be the strongest thing in existence. I present to you, Arale Norimaki! Wait, he made a kid? As in assuming as she appears, Arale is actually quite the remarkable model. She possesses a supercomputer that can translate any language, solve complex calculations in seconds, and thanks to being an automaton, she doesn't need to eat, sleep, or breathe to survive. For her more offensive options, she can turn her arms into cannons or can shoot energy beams from her mouth, along with super strength and super speed. Like the time she punched a planet so hard it broke in half. Eh, but don't worry, it got better in seconds. Or how about the time she was punched so hard she went around the world fast enough and ended up behind the guy who hit her? Wait, what? <laughs> well, as it turns out, Arali is what many may call a gag character, being that she's practically capable of doing whatever the hell she wants as long as she herself finds it funny. Such as having a hammer space, basically a pocket space in which Arale can pull random bullshit out, like weapons, her own manga, and even poop. <laughs> you just giggle? At poop? What? Poop is funny. She can be squashed and stretched and can even grow wings. And despite being a, well, robot, she can produce things that us humans can't produce, like boogers and, uh, you know, I'll just stop right there. She can control the elements of the world, like the time she spat out ice and froze over an entire planet, and even at the sun to scare it away. What did she have against celestial bodies? Hell, not even rainbows are safe from her grasp. But her powers aren't limited to just her own world. I can recap a certain world with a certain saying that crosses over on many occasions. That being both in anime and games. Like the time her and Goku both clashed multiple times. The same Goku who can trade blows with God of Destruction Beerus, in which their fight threatened the stability of the entire universe. And in Dragon Ball Fusion, Zorola can fly through a course in this area in just under 50 seconds. And we're not talking a simple go around the diameter here, I'm talking loop-de-loops, -loop, traversing caves, tight turns, all despite the fact that, outside of DBZ crossovers and some shape-shifting, it's never actually said that she can fucking fly! Being a gag character, she can punch people out of manga panels, know when the chapter ends, and even grab the very manga panel she was in, rolled it up, and put it into the reality machine. You know, that one machine that can create anything into reality? She put that into it, and broke the fabric of reality. Who let this girl cook? She also once threw famous mangaka Akira Toriyama out of a manga panel that he himself was drawing. Wait, did she just throw out her own creator? What? No, Slump is still here. Oh, you mean Toriyama. Well, at the very least, we can breathe a sigh of relief in knowing that at least she uses her powers for good. Well, I mean, she's still, at the end of the day, a child. Albeit a slightly mischievous child with fourth wall breaking and bullshit gag powers. But a child nonetheless. A child that can easily be distracted by poop. I always wondered, if she's so powerful, why does she need glasses? I mean, she's basically a little robo-god. Huh. You know, with all the wacky shenanigans, that fact never really crossed my mind. 
I guess when you spend so much time looking at all the weird shit around you, you begin to stop questioning it and just embrace it. Huh. Eh, well she does have a limited battery supply that once drained she'll become vulnerable. I mean, granted, if she doesn't just forget about that and continue on without a care in the world. Yeah, I can't tell if that's her tune power in effect or lazy writing. Like I said, sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches and come to terms with the fact that the most powerful being in the universe might just be a little robot girl obsessed with... Huh. They always say that there's no greater power than the power of love. Now wait, let me guess. The lesson here is also that the real treasure was the friends we made along the way. Or ooh ooh, the power of friendship can triumph all evil. You don't gotta be such a negative Nancy. While a naive and oftentimes laughed at concept to most, no practitioner of this philosophy showcases its strength better than the small Korean girl obsessed over her ninja crush, Puka. Reigning in the quaint village of Suga, Puka lives and works in the Go Wrong Noodle Shop. She does what you would assume any typical girl would do. She hangs out with friends, goes on adventures, crushes over the ninja prodigy Garbu, but she's not just your usual fangirl. She is a powerhouse, like being able to throw her friends so high they reach orbit, and then catches them with her head, which also creates a crater. Or strong enough to pull a submarine through solid ice. But wait, wouldn't the line break? That's where your suspension of disbelief ends? Hey, Bass Pro Shop isn't fuck around. I guess. So what's her deal? What do you mean? Why does she never talk? I mean, she only ever does noises here and there. Is she a mute? Well, actually, she's for the most part silent due to her mirroring Garu. I mean, as we all know, imitation is the most sincerest form of flattery. Uh-huh. I'm debating whether or not that's really wholesome? Or really creepy. So how do you explain this? I mean, she literally plugged that guy's character bust, and it just erased his electricity. Wait, did she just scare the chicken pox off of people? What in the actual- Oh wait, I forgot. Goofy tune powers, right? Well, yeah, it could be that. But it could also be something else. Like what? <clears throat> the power of love! I mean, thanks to it, she's able to beat multiple ninjas, run around the world for days without tiring, and the power of love sure is scary. I wonder if he could even let her... What? Huh, I guess we can chalk that up to immortality then. I guess this does void the whole till death do us part bit, huh? Well, when she's not cosplaying as a figure of death, she can inexplicably become pretty much anything she wants, from mermaids, a superhero, to a wish-granting genies, to even... Big ol' monkey. Really going up the power totem there, huh? Yeah, I'm more scared than impressed. Especially when she can even rip holes in reality and even reverse time in an alternate reality. And that's not the first time she did it. She once pushed a carousel so fast that it, that it sent her and her friends back to the Jurassic period. She can harness any element, create barriers, fire heart projections, grow in size, and when battling her rival Ring Ring, she blocked this eraser. The same eraser that erases people from existence. And then there's the time she turned herself and Garu into constellations. So let's see, super strength, super speed, fourth wall awareness, can rip holes in reality, control time, and take form of other things and use those powers for herself. And she can't be erased from existence. Yeah, okay, so what's the weakness? Weakness? I mean, there's her naivete that's led her to getting tricked and put out of commission for a short while. How short? Why aren't you answering? She can also become emotional and cry uncontrollably, which can create waterfalls. But have no fear, because it was instantly healed by the power of love. Is that really all it takes to give her power? Well, I suppose there's another drawback about love. And what is that? Well, in the words of famous victim of love, love is blind. Did you just quote the room? What? It fits. I mean, you know the stupid shit people do in the name of love? That's why I abstain from such primitive feelings. Sure, that's the reason you're single. Dude! And it's not like the feelings aren't mutual. There are often times when Garu himself returns the feelings, even at times going out of his way to helping her out. Well, I guess wear down someone enough and boom, blossom love. I mean, you could say it's... funny love. Or Stockholm Syndrome. Whether it's noodles or ninja crushes, once Puka sets her sight on something, you better start praying. 
Cause nothing will stop her, no matter what. Alright, it's time! Both combatants are ready and it is time to put the debate to rest. What the fuck? Huh? Ooh. What the? This is why I can't animate on time. All right, whatever. Next scene.
Oh shit, there was actually a winner? I could have sworn this would have been one of those instances of it being too convoluted so let's end it in a draw type of thing. Also, who are those other guys? What other guys? Both the Rolly and Kuka were ridiculously tricky to find any type of weaknesses that the other couldn't capitalize on. Both can see past the fourth wall, so neither really had the element of surprise. Kuka might have been slightly smarter of the two on paper, but remember that Arali's an android with a supercomputer for a brain. In fact, most of what Arali has over Puka is actually due to her being an android. For example, Puka was vulnerable to getting sick, tired, hungry, all the things that make you human, well, human. Arali does also showcase those symptoms. It's important to understand that it's just her mimicking human traits rather than her really being affected. But couldn't Puka just drain Arali's battery? Well, firstly, Arali's battery drain would have to come down to her power output meaning Puka would have to match a Raleigh in power output for any power to really be drained. Puka's strongest speed and strength was creating constellations in the sky. If she was capable of creating each star herself, she would be around star level at minimum, potentially solar system. In contrast, a Raleigh can match Goku's in Super Saiyan Blue. At this time, Goku could potentially destroy the entire universe in his base form. So yeah, the gap in power would be too much for Puka. She wouldn't even be able to siphon her power for herself since it would be too much power for even her to handle. And that's mostly where the main differences lie. Both can cancel each other out with their fourth wall and tomb for shenanigans. So with those two out of the picture, it all came down to their respected powers and skills on their own. Now the power gap was already stated, but Fuka does have the edge in terms of battle experience since it's more likely she trained to keep up with ninjas. And it's possible that out of the other two, she would be slightly smarter. But at the end of the day, it's still a super fighting android versus a human girl. And even if Aureli couldn't outright erase Puka from existence, there are other ways to win a fight without killing. Like, say, trapping them in a manga panel, comic book page, or even a scroll, just to name a few. Puka was an impressive fighter and her power was incredible, but Aureli simply sent her in a slump. The winner is Aureli Norimaki.